You're listening to the Pour Over Podcast. The Pour Over Podcast is a podcast of Marcus Point Baptist Church. Marcus Point exists to connect people to God, one another, and a lost world. We hope that through this podcast you are strengthened in your faith, challenged to walk closer to Him, and find encouragement and hope in Jesus. As much as we hope to do that, this podcast should not supplement your commitment to the local church. If you don't have a local church or in the Pensacola area, we would love to have you join us. You can find more information about Marcus Point at PensacolaChurch.org. If you like this podcast, be sure to follow us on social media at The Pour Over Podcast. Subscribe and make sure to share this podcast with others so that they can learn and grow too. The Pour Over Podcast is back with another episode. Hold on, let me redo that. Let me redo that. <clears throat> the Pour Over Podcast is back with another episode. We're so glad you joined us this morning. Had to bring a little more energy. I, I yeah, felt like dude. that was a little little too eh at first. So anyway, Preston, how are we feeling today? I'm good, man. I'm good. Life's good. I got to up early, and uh, I actually I led a Bible study at a school, and yeah. um, then I went to Starbucks. Yeah. And, uh, so we have an interesting drink today. Yeah, we do. Have you had any? No. So you haven't had any coffee nope. so far. So nope. I had I had some black coffee already, um, but but I can I can I can go that's for, not, for that's not going to ruin your palate. No, 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 it's just like a regular. Yeah. And I haven't I finished it a little bit ago, so I'm I'm good. But yeah, this is um this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's go ahead. We'll jump into our fill it up segment okay. today. Oh come on! Turn the oh re, redo it. Hold on. Look, okay. This is the day of redos. Yeah, we're All right, just let, gonna redo it again. Here, let's back it up. All right. So let's go ahead and go in our fill it up segment today. Yeah, yeah with perfect timing. Yeah, there we go. Fill it up segment today. We have a coffee order. Yes. Jamie from Michigan. From Michigan. From Michigan. Who's in Michigan? I don't know. How are people listening to us in Michigan? I don't know. Jamie, you're a trooper. We we appreciate you. Uh, listening to us all the way in Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give give the applause. Give, yes. Where's uh, the, oh, where, co- where's the button? Where's I've the button? Got, oh. I've got, uh, I don't have an applause. Oh, dang it. I thought we had applause on the board. Yeah. It's all right. Don't don't mess it up. I won't. I won't. Because today's been the day of redos. But yeah. anyway, she, she gave us this order, and it's interesting because we've been to a few coffee shops and nobody – Nobody had heard of this. No, no. The poor lady at Starbucks was uh, a little taken back. And then I said, it's okay. It only has like five ingredients to it. And, and she, then she calmed down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so you pulled it up and showed them. And they I made it. Show it to them, yeah. But it's a, a cafe miel. Yeah, M I E L. It's probably not say like M. Miel or meal. Or meal, cafe meal. We'll say cafe For all meal. We know it's mul. You know, it's just something Whatever. super cultural. It's Spanish. Yeah. It's a Spanish coffee. Is, is what it's called. Yeah. So we have a cup right here. Yeah. And we're going to try them today. Um, now, is yours hot? Uh, yeah, it they're only, all hot. Okay, they're it only hot. comes hot. They're all hot. All I've, right. I've been roasted by everybody for drinking the sissy coffee. Yeah, that's so true. all hot All right. I'm gonna, I'll try this first. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's a neutral look. Okay. Okay. I need... It's one of those where I feel like you got to have more than one sip. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's I, not not too bad. It's not it's not bad at all. It's um I don't know, maybe I need to mix it up a little bit. There's not a ton of flavor to it, I feel like. Mix it up. Mix it up. I'm I'm getting it. All right. I don't know, I like that. Okay. I like that. I feel like they put maybe a little too much milk in it cuz it's kind of milky. Yeah. And maybe it's not supposed to be like that, but anyway, try it, try it out, see what you think. This is fantastic. I mean, I'll, I'll drink the whole thing. What it's are you talking about. It's yeah. not. I just. Why does it remind me? Why do I think? You got to remember hot chocolate. Yes. With like some kind of a twist to it. Yeah. So you got to remember, I drink black coffee, so I love like strong tastes of coffee. This has obviously a lot of milk in it. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, yeah. Okay, so this thing is made with espresso, mm. two shots. This is good. Honey, whole milk, 
then finished off with a heavy sprinkle of ground cinnamon. I can't wait till we get an email from Jamie and she goes, nope, that's not it. That's, that's not, not what it. I was talking about. But this is... I uh, have to redo it. <laughs> dude, I'm going to finish this whole thing while Me we're too. sitting here. 100%. And by the end, we'll be talking like a little bit of this. Like, hey, we yeah, got two yeah. shots yeah. in here. I'm down. I'm down. Dude. Thank you, Michigan. Okay, okay. I mean, I, uh, what's her name? Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie from Michigan. Yeah. Um, all right. Out of out of, out of of 10, what you got? Four, dog. Any uh, coffee. Uh, four? Any coffee. that Okay. Out of 10? Any coffee that I can just drink without any presupposition, you know, blank slate, and I'm going to drink the whole thing, you get a four. Because to me, coffee is about convenience. Coffee is a con- four out of ten. Yeah, coffee is a contextual drink. Okay. okay, you're drinking coffee to be energized, to you know get some enjoyment. And so for me, if I'm going to drink the whole thing, it means that I enjoyed it more than average. I'm willing. You yeah, know, but average is three to me. Ten. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought it was yeah, out of five. No, out of ten. I was let's in there going, bro. That. Four. Let's what? Re- let's redo that. I would say an eight. Okay. I oh, okay. I was going to say, I, I knew you liked it better than a four. Sorry, I think of one. Jamie five was like lot. punching the, the yeah. dash <laughs> as she's driving, listening to this because she's Press like, four. <laughs> Dear um, diary. <laughs> I, I think I'm with you. I think I give it a seven. I, the only reason I give it a seven and probably not an eight or a nine is just because it's. I don't. Hold on. Let me. Don't drop it. I don't, don't know. drop the, down. The more that I, the more that I drink it, the more I like it. Though. Yeah, that's that, the thing. That's what I'm the starting to taste is solid. So it's the a cinnamon, it's a, it's a seven or eight for me. I'm gonna go seven just to be different than you. But a lot of Christmas people would love this drink. This is a great. I feel like this is great like dessert drink. Like you just finished dinner, and you're at a nice restaurant, and they bring out cafe mule true, or whatever, yeah. and you sit down and you're talking and drink. This would be awesome for that. That is a that's very astute. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what I feel. I feel like you got to kind of drink it with your pinky up. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Cafe meal. <laughs> <laughs> do, you oh, know, do you even know what a meal is? How do you? We got to. <laughs> <laughs> I need a mustache for I this. Just, yeah. I can just think oh. of the Monopoly man si- sipping on his yes. meal. <laughs> his Cafe meal. Mm. Do you, you want be- so, Somebody's going to mm. roast us because we're saying this wrong. Mm. Oh, gosh. So, anyway, <laughs> thank you, Jamie, for the recommendation. Um, thank I, you. I wish people around here actually knew because I would order this for more. sure. Well, so. maybe they will now. Yeah. yeah. Once again, it's uh, okay. So, I did two shots of espresso. Maybe some people do one honey, whole milk, and then finished off with heavy sprinkle or ground cinnamon. They do froth the milk. And the you top. found that online? Yeah. Yeah. Just some random, you know. Okay. I'm sure that there are variations, but I, I wanted to find one just with a few ingredients so we didn't go overboard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, cool. Well, there you go. You have it. Cafe Mule, whatever, you know. We, 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 uh, we, we, we like it. It's good. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, we'll go ahead into our Drink It In segment. And literally this time in our Drink It In segment, we will be drinking in our Cafe Mules. But, it's uh, good, man. It is good. It is good. So if there's any pauses, it's me and Preston. Yeah. Drinking. But anyway, we've been over the past several weeks doing a series called Personalities of the Bible. And today yes. we're actually finishing our series. And uh, we have um, basically been going through characters in the Bible yeah. and talking about what their personality type would be based off of the um, Myers-Briggs or Myers-Biggs. What is it? Was it called again? I think it's Briggs. I think it's Briggs. Myers-Briggs uh, personality assessment. Basically, we've said this before, but if you want to know what your personality type is, you can go to 16personalities.com. It's the number 16personalities.com. Preston and I have both taken it and uh, have, have found our personality types through that. But basically, this... I'm not going to go into all of it because I explain it every week, and I know people who've been listening, they they understand, but it basically gives you four letters for your personality. You're either an E or an I, introverted, extroverted. You're either an S or an N, intuitive or sensing. Yeah. You're either an F or a... Oh, dang. Wait, what's that? F or a T because you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. feeling Feeling, or thinking, thinking. Yeah, yeah. and then you're either a P or a J... Uh, perceiving or judging. If you want more information about what those mean, go to the first part of this series because we go in detail, kind of explain everything. 
Um, but over the past few weeks, we've been going through some characters, and today we're going to kind of end with, we just celebrated Easter not that long ago, and we fi- figured it'd probably be actually kind of cool to end talking about some of the disciples. And so today we're going to walk through, we're going to walk through at least four of them. We may like find some other ones and like give you kind of what what they are, but we're going to kind of walk through four of them. So anyway, Preston, before we get started, I, I think it's interesting, what has been because I have some favorites through this, but what's been your favorite part about this series? Because I've, I've really enjoyed. This is different. Like I don't think I've ever read or thought about anything like this before. Yeah, when you when you're studying the Bible, you know, I think a lot of Christians, <clears throat> when they start out reading the Bible, you start reading out just kind of just reading for knowledge, you reading for wisdom, which is great. Um, not a bad way to read the Bible, but then as you grow in your faith, you start reading more in the context of things. But rarely do even mature Christians read in this context. Yeah, they're this reading on a personal level. Um, they're they're looking into the personality of the individual, whether these you know things online are true at all. How could we know? But we can go by decisions and thought process and uh, gauge their personalities and see you know, some of the pros and cons of all these personalities and how God interacted with them. Um, And so I I think I've just really enjoyed it because, you know, we we did King Saul. Yeah. uh, And I liked that one a lot. I'm always always down studying on villains, but I I love reading into their decisions and just their thought processes. And it it just makes, it makes the word come to life, I think, a little bit differently yeah. i definitely think it makes some of the characters of the bible feel a little more human yeah. like sometimes i think you know you look at someone like the disciples or even you know moses or noah or you know all the people that we've gone through and they, they just seem so superhuman because of the things that they've accomplished and sometimes it's just kind of interesting to go look at them and go well they were human too god used them in extraordinary ways and he can do that through me too you know um, but also, I think one of the cool things for me has been seeing who is similar to my personality types or my personality type because it's funny because it almost made me realize a little more of like who I am, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, yeah. and, and, and the Bible almost kind of puts it in the context of, oh, these are how people who had my personality types were used by God. Like, yeah. you know, and I know I'm different, I'm unique, and and I don't want to, like, read myself in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm not saying any of that. But it, it also has kind of just helped me see, like, oh, I do see how my personality is kind of similar to, you know, this person in the Bible. And, oh, yeah, I kind of see how God could use me in yes. similar way. Yes. I don't know. So it's kind of, it's been kind of refreshing to kind of see that aspect um, and I, I've just, I don't know, I've enjoyed this series. It's, it's just something different. It's been fun. Yeah. I've, I've had a lot of fun with it. So yeah. anyway, all right, let's 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 go ahead and jump let's in. Let's jump in. Let's jump in today. So um, the personalities we're going to look at today, um, we're going to start off with Matthew, the apostle. We're going to do John, the apostle. We're going to do Simon Peter, of course. And then we're going to end our villain of the day. Can you guess it? It's Judas. It's Judas. It's Judas. You got to. So let's start off with uh, Matthew. Yeah. All right. Matthew, it says, is an INFJ. So introverted, intuitive, feeling, judging. Judging. So th- these are known as introspective, compassionate, creative individuals who have a strong sense of empathy and desire to help others. Mm. So that is what he's described as INFJ. Don't you have um do you have that pulled up or Yes. You yeah. you mentioned that that yeah. section in scripture. Yeah, his call in uh in Matt, in Luke chapter 5. It says that <clears throat> after he went out and noticed a tax collector this is Jesus, noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax book Levi Matthew interchangeable there. Uh he said to them or said to him follow me and he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him and Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that is cool. That, we had a conversation about this off yeah. off the podcast that I want, I'm going to bring it up now, but it says he's an I. Yeah, yeah. Introverted. This is a tough one. And I, you read that, you know, story, or, or that account, if you will, and he throws this big reception. That doesn't yeah, sound like yeah. an introvert to me. 
But Jacob, we have done this is our fourth week yeah. doing this. Yeah. All right. So here's the big question that I've been thinking about in the back, back, background. And we yep. did not talk about this beforehand. So this is live. <laughs> Does person can personalities change after mm. salvation? Mm. Ooh. That's a good question. Because you see here, okay, they're saying INFJ. I it was INFJ, right? Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. not totally against that theory. Yeah. However, how does an INFJ immediately throw a huge reception and party? Yeah. But he does it right after he's called. So it says in that description that INFJs are very compassionate, willing to help others and stuff. Was it possible that God or that Christ was beginning a new purpose? In his yeah. life, and after following him, and that may have involved more of an extroverted yeah. tendency. Yeah, here, here's what I think. Um, do this is my initial thought. So this has like, this is me thinking out loud here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so when I say this, like, I'm, don't take it as gospel. But That's what I do all day. This so. is my initial yeah. thought. My initial thought is: Do personalities change? It depends how you define personalities. Okay, but the way that I would define personalities. I would say probably not, but when you're saved, what does faith require you to do? Well, it requires you to step out of your comfort zone. So in other words, what does it require you to do? It requires you to step outside of your personality a little mm. bit. Like I'm a major introvert. Like people do not realize that. <laughs> major introvert. But part of what God's called me to requires me to be extroverted at times. Yeah, yeah. So has my personality changed? No. Yeah. I'm still introverted, but... I am required, if I want to follow God, to step out of my comfort zone to do things. So introverts, I feel like, inevitably are going to have to be extroverted to follow God at some point. Yes. So does that mean their personality changes? That's where it depends how you define. Because I think you're, there's your ideal personality, like yeah. what you would be with like no external factors. But then there's an adjusted personality, like what you have to be at work or what you have to be in certain environments. You know, like my job requires me to be extroverted to an extent, so mm -hmm. there's an adjustment that happens in my personality. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily my my personality changes. It just means I have to function outside of my personality. So I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah. Because then you, e even with the way I'm talking, you can go in circles because it just depends. It just depends how you define certain things. I don't know. I, you know, all these personality tests, you can take them over and over again. Sometimes you're going to get different results. I remember the first one that I ever took back in college was nothing to do with an actual personality. It was a Harry Potter house quiz. And oh, I, all yeah. of my buddies were watching the movies. And don't burn me at the stake now, okay, when I talk about Harry Potter. Heathen. But, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I'm going to see pitchforks going home. But... <laughs> I remember taking it, and I got the Hufflepuff, you know, which yeah. is like the extroverted, lovey-dovey kind yeah, of house yeah, yeah. in the movie. But, you know, I took it like three more times just out of kicks, and I got Hufflepuff two more times, but then I got Slytherin, right? The ones that mm, that's are probably what, the evil. That's probably what I would get. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what I would get, if we're being honest. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, ooh, yeah, that would probably be me. <laughs> yeah, oh. the blonde kid with a slick bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think... I think there's a little bit of truth to all these personality tests that you can land a little bit more, you know, on one or two different personalities. But my opinion is that after salvation, the ability to have different aspects of your personality, I would say, are accelerated. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if Matthew really was an introvert, he took it very seriously after following Jesus to do something that Jesus would approve of yeah. and would uh, be thankful for, which was immediately getting all of his unsaved friends near Jesus, which was a very extroverted act. So I think it accelerated um, his personality uh, growth yeah, in, you can in go, a different way. You can go into a lot of things because the Bible says you're a new creature. Yes. So like, whoa, does that yeah. mean, what does that, what does that really mean? Right. And this is, yeah, I mean, you can go in the weeds with this, but, like, you're a new creature, so does that mean you're completely new, like, you have a fresh personnel? Like, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get into that because yeah, we, yeah. we, could, we could get there. Sorry, You know, sorry, we could go I... there. But but I'm saying, like, um, I think the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives can definitely cause us to do things that we would never maybe normally do, too. I don't know. It's just 
it's it's interesting. I'm glad you brought that. That's a good question. Yeah, That'd just, be a good question. Yeah. I'd love to hear from our listeners what you think. Do you yeah. think personalities change after salvation? Interesting question. Interesting question. But so <clears throat> Matthew was INFJ. INFJ. We have questions about the I, but we're we're outside of that, I think he's pretty this pretty good. Right. Pretty spot on. Um all right, let's talk about John. Oh yeah. The apostle of love. <laughs> <laughs> You said that yeah. so confident. Oh, uh, yeah. Love. <laughs> he drinking a cafe mir. <laughs> Dude, it's hitting us. <laughs> it is hitting us. Uh, I'm almost done. I know. We're both talking fast. <laughs> People are like, did I accidentally turn this on like two times? The uh, Anyway, nah, the speed. Um, John, it has as also an INFJ. Um... So it says John's known for his strong intuitive abilities, frequently receiving divine revelations and visions, as well as his ability to understand and empathize with others. Mm. He is often described as being introspective and private, exhibiting many traits associated with the introverted personality type. He has strong sense of empathy, emotional intelligence, often shows concern and care for those around him, and is known in kindness and compassion. So, I don't know. INFJ. What you think? Hmm. I definitely think I agree with the F, the feeling. I, th- I definitely feel like that's John. I mean, come on, also yeah. love like um, introverted. I'd probably agree with. Okay. I we don't hear too much of John like interjecting. It's a, it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard. Um, intuitive. I guess, yeah, yeah. I get, I would agree. I would agree with that. I mean, yeah. It okay. <sighs> this John, th- I'm sorry, and this sounds so terrible of me because I'm a pastor and I should be a little bit more biblically scholared. But this is the John of the Book of Revelation, right? Yes, the yes, one, yeah. The one that okay. That's uh, I was I was in that vein. I would think the intuitive is is definitely real. I mean, for someone to receive those apocalyptic level visions and to write them down um i think when you read revelation right and i am no expert on eschatology or in times or any of that stuff but when you read the book of revelation there is a lot of emotional language within it and i believe that we see a little bit of that in the book of revelation because for example, when he's talking about the seven churches in modern-day Turkey, um, especially Laodicea, he is reverberating, I think, very emotionally what God is speaking through him about how you know, lukewarm they are and how God is going to spit them out of their mouth, and he's kind of going church by church, and he's talking, but it's also not simply because he's just you know, parroting what God's telling him in the Word. He's, he's kind of feeling it, you know, like he's—, he's He's really emphasizing because he see he's an eyewitness account of how all these churches are doing. You know, that's that's I guess that's where I would see him a little bit more on the emotional side. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I I, I would agree. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look up. So some people don't believe. Because I, I got to thinking, I was like, I think there's a little bit of... Contr- yeah, some Is people- there some controversy over the John thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe it was John, but some people say it's not. Some, I was some like, people. I was trying to remember. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the Apostle John. Sorry. I was over here looking it up. No, it's okay. Um, Yeah. David Guzik, I use him a lot. It says the best evidence points to this being the Apostle John, but... Some people believe it was a different John. Different John. I, I'm under the belief that it it was the Apostle John. But anyway, that that was interesting. You threw because when you said that, I was like, I'm pretty. Yeah, you know, like when somebody asks you a question and you know the answer, but then it makes you like, you're like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, that was me for a second. Yeah. Um. So yeah. But to read that passage, and it's in Revelation three, starting in uh fifteen. 
And a lot of us have heard this passage before, but it says, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This is very emotional language here. Now, of course, it's God speaking through John, but I don't think that God intends to remove... Uh, Yeah, personality wasn't removed. Yeah, yeah, personality and personal experience wasn't removed from their ability to convey this language. I mean, they are authors, uh, uh, you know... Yeah, they didn't become robots when they were writing. I mean, they wrote what God wanted them to write. They were inspired, but it wasn't like they were... They went in... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other story. But yeah, so... I agree with you because you look at First John, and First yeah. John, I mean, you can tell he's emotional, mm. but also he's like incredibly straight to the point, yes. like just cut and dry. What, what does he say? He's like, if you don't follow his commandment, or if you don't love God, or if you don't have love, you don't know God. Like, I mean, he's just so cut and dry. Yeah, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That's I mean, one six. He's yeah. just, you can just see his heart. No, his, you, you can see kind of his personality is kind of like just so cut and dry in yeah. some of these things and um, in the way he writes. And so I would agree with you. Yeah, I would agree with you. I, I think he's he's definitely emotional. I think he's de- I think he's intuitive. I, I actually would probably agree. I think an, an INFJ yeah. is, is accurate for him. Yeah. So cool. All right, that's John. Let's let's do Simon Peter, and then we'll finish. <laughs> yeah. We'll finish Simon with Judas. Peter. Simon Peter's an ESFJ. He's me, yeah, man. Dude, He's there's, me, man. There's no question about this one. I feel like extroverted, sensing, <laughs> feeling, Golly. judging, dude. He is. He Mike Tyson the guy's ear off, man. He I mean, didn't bite he, his ear off. He cut the ear off. Sorry, he, I don't need to say that so clearly, <laughs> but he did. He is an ESFJ. He's outgoing, social, taking the lead. Appearing to be energized by people and others, focused on the needs of others, displaying empathy and concern to those around him. He's detail oriented. I mean, yeah, impulsive. Yeah, reacting emotional. I mean, I I did. I feel like this one's not really a question. I feel like he is very much an e, ESFJ. The only thing that I could see maybe is if he was an ENFJ. Yeah, like a little more like intuitive and. But I don't think so because he was so in the moment that he would just react. Yep. So I think he's ESFJ. ESFJ is <clears throat> very – they take major ownership over what they choose to do. Yeah. But they are not good under pressure. And you can tell because he's the one who denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. Jesus prophesied that he would do that. He kept saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But then he did not realize that that was going to come from other people – putting pressure on him and saying, hey, you're the one that was with Jesus. Mm. And he so quickly denied him three times because he wasn't in that. I just feel this one so much because I'm ESFJ and I suck under pressure. Yeah. Like I am the worst. And so, um, yeah, very real. Spot on. Yeah. I feel like that one's pretty good. I, I feel like that. I had to go back. I always forget which one I am. I'm an ISTJ. Yeah. So anyway, but I think that one's pretty simple. I don't know what more we could say about that. ESFJ. I think he's a cut and dry ESFJ. Yeah. All right, let's go to Judas. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to Judas. Judas is actually, oh. <laughs> it, it has a different, per- I, we have not had this personality yet. No, we haven't. So this one's interesting. But you're close to it. <laughs> I am close to it. But I'm not fully there. Yeah, you're, you're, All right. What what was I again? So you ISTJ. Are, you're an ISTJ. Woo, and Judas, close. Judas is an ISTP. ISTP. He is introverted, sensing, thinking, and uh, perceiving. They're typically the first to attempt new things, always ready for a challenge, live on excitement and adventure, yep. constantly seeking new ways to push the envelope. Mm. They create opportunities and do tasks accurately and on time. They like the experience of learning. Um, by doing dirty labor because it broadens their viewpoint and understanding of life. They like troubleshooting their own issues to see what works best. Nothing beats the rush of firsthand experiences that season them with growth and maturity. Yeah. Um, They care deeply about principles and independence. Mm. They are realistic realists and a strong sense of justice and equality, which is interesting for (laughs) Judas. 
to distinguish out the herd. They keep their lives private yet spontaneous. It's impossible to predict their next move because they like living in both excitement and mystery. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, ISTP. Yeah, I have a feeling that if you went on this website and looked up other ISTPs, we're going to find several celebrities. Okay. We're going to find several major inventors and people who made big waves in society because that's precisely what you just described and what Judas did. Now, Judas, villain among villains, okay? You know, I mean, if you look up, there's a fictional uh, book, Dante's Inferno, if you've ever heard it, by Dante Gal uh, Alighieri. It talks about all these, you know, th this huge story, but basically <clears throat> it talks about hell mostly. And at the very bottom of hell are two people, Satan and Judas. So two individuals who have major, major historical significance. That book you know, to a lot of people, almost equalized the fame between Satan and Judas by the level of betrayal that they committed. One was against God the Father. The other was against God the Son. It's pretty It's pretty fascinating because, uh, sorry, you look like you want to say something, so I'm going to, let me, let me pass the ball back before I go on a huge tangent. Snoop Dogg is an <laughs> ISTP. <laughs> Hey, but, you know... He's a creator. He is a creator. Um, Adam Sandler. Okay. Um, let me keep going. I'm trying to trying to see who else we got. Uh, I don't know some of these people. I They don't have, like, a ton of celebrities and stuff like that. Oh, never mind. Dang. Hoger. <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah. Sports. Yeah, they don't have they don't have a ton of people. I guess the only guess celebrities they have in here is if they've if they've actually done it or something. Yeah. So yeah, but you know, but I mean, Steve Adam Sandler. Oh, Messi. They have oh Lionel Messi. Really interesting. I mean, anyway. Adam Sandler is worth like half a billion dollars. Let's see I mean, if, he's way up there. Let's see what fictional characters. Hmm. Let's see movies. Jason Bourne. <laughs> Would he be an ISTP no, or no? No, probably not. Okay, he'd probably. Be. Um. Yeah, they don't have a whole lot of movies. Okay, never mind. Dude, it's crazy that they have like almost that's, all that's the Bible characters, and then they don't have any. Anyway, interesting. Hmm. All right, but go back to what you're saying. I'm sorry. No, I just... no, I just. I mean, I just think there's a lot of creators and a lot of pioneers to things that that carry that personality type. I mean, in Matthew 26, it uh, starting in verse 14, this is the beginning of Judas's bargain. It says, Then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. I don't think the money was anything to do with it. I, I think it was... Judas was clearly not truly a disciple. Judas was in that circle to, you know, to be involved with something great. And then when he ended it all, he did something even more groundbreaking. He, as a disciple, air quotes, disciple of Jesus, went to the chief priest directly, and they probably were shocked that one of the disciples came up to him because they had friends that were that had it out for Jesus, but they most certainly didn't have one in his direct circle. Yeah. And to have Judas do that had to have been. I think the wow. way that they have you have you seen the chosen at all? Mm -mm, no. So I've been meaning to, but the way that yeah. they depict the way that they depict him in the chosen, like this makes a ton of sense. Really? Like they they depict him like an ISTP because. For him, it's just always about the next venture. It's always about what's new and exciting and yeah. what's next. Yeah. And so I think for him, I think this makes sense. And I don't know, that was just kind of what brought brought to my mind was the chosen. Because I, immediately I was like, yeah, that's how they depict him. Like he's just this quiet guy, but he's just mesmerized by the new, yeah. the exciting. What's, what's, what's popular now? He's following the trend. Yeah. yeah. And so... Yeah, anyway, I, I definitely think that this is this is a good one. This yeah. is a good one. Close to mine, but I'm judging instead of yeah. instead of perceiving interesting. So anyway, it's wild, th that's man. all of them today. I wanna yeah. I wanna let me see if I can find any other 
before we go, if I can find any other, um, any other of the disciples, um, I saw a few more. What about Dalton Thomas? Yeah, Thomas is on here. I just got to get to him. Oh, there's Luke. Okay. Let's see what Luke was. Luke is an INFJ, it says. Okay. Come on. Um, I didn't have these pulled up, so. Do, 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 do. Philip. Uh, Philip. Let's see what we got for Philip. Philip was an INFP. Okay. That's a different one. I don't think we've, uh, I don't think we've had an INFP hmm. yet. Let me just find one more. Let me find Doubting Thomas, and we'll we'll end with that. Yeah. We never did. Did did we do Satan? No. <laughs> we said we weren't going to do Satan we or we Jesus. Gonna, that's right. Yeah. Man, of course, now I can't find him. Man. That's okay. It's putting doubt in me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, nope. All right. I don't see him. Yeah. They're just not sure. That's all. They're just yeah, not sure. They're in alphabetical order, but I don't know if it has. Yeah. I don't see. Oh, there's, That's okay. There's T. There's T. Nope. Okay. Anyway, I can't find it. But anyway, that's that's the the disciples right there. There's a, there's a few of them. We didn't get through all of them, but. We got through, I think, six of them right yeah. there. So, anyway, that does it for our personalities of the Bible. Does it? We're finished. We'll be moving on to something else next week. So, thank you guys for being a part of this. If you have, I mean, if you have any questions or if there's someone that we didn't mention that you would like to know, like what we, you know, what we have for them, um, you can shoot us an email. Yeah. Pour over at marcuspointbaptist.org. Shoot us an email. Let us know. Hey, I'd really like to. You know, no. I'm probably gonna what get an Satan email. Is hey, or, I, I, I'm a Slytherin. Uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, We're not gonna do that. But if there's anybody you'd like to know, you can email us. Or if you have a coffee order, um, just make sure it's good as this coffee yeah, cafe dude. meal. Um, mm. Thank you, Jamie from Michigan. Yeah, this Jamie was, from Michigan. This was nice. If we had an applause button, you would be getting the applause. Yeah, button. I, I got rid. So of make it. sure, make sure email it in. Make sure to follow us on social media. The Pour Over Podcast got some. Awesome content that's getting ready to get released now. Yeah. So, anyway, make sure you check it out. But that does it for our Drink It In segment today, and that leads us to our Pour It Out segment. And we don't really have anything to pour out today because we finished these cafe meals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm already crashing a little bit. Are you really? <laughs> Off of the coffee. Yeah. That's great. That's great. All right. You want to go first, Preston, this week? I, th I think I went first last yeah, week. Yeah, 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 sure. Think. Let's, let's yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, why, why not? Why yeah, not? man. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Ah, man. Back up, back up. Oh, oh, I, I, mess, oh, I messed oh, it up. Today's oh. the day of do-overs. Yep. Yeah, let's, let's try that again. Let's All do right. it. Three, two, one, pour it out. Um, I installed a pull-up bar in my, uh, in my uh, garage today. And not today, it was it was a couple of days ago. But I basically cool. just, yeah, yeah. Mm. I was really nervous about it because you're usually supposed to put them on like a concrete wall. But I ain't got that. I got studs. And so my studs, by the way, are like 22 inches apart. They're super far apart, mm. which was frustrating. But, man, I just got like two by 12s and just drilled it into the studs and then put the pull-up bar into the wood on that on this two by tools i thought it was gonna rip it out of the wall i mean i don't know about you but i just get nervous about that mm, stuff yep. but i started using it and it's working so i'm now looking into workouts like good little workout programs don't want to do p90x about killed me um and it just takes so much time so if you got a suggestion out there a good 30 45 minute solid workout i've got minimum equipment bow flex weights you know pull-up bar stuff like that let me know let yeah. me know that's good. Cool. Yeah. A lot of, I, I think people underestimate how much you can do with just body weight. For sure. I mean, that's what people are always act like they got to have a ton of equipment. And it's like, no, you, you don't. You don't really just, just be active. And, but I anyway. am pro home gym. 
for oh, sure. Oh, dude, definitely. Sure. Kenzie keeps sending me. She sent me something on two things on Facebook Marketplace, and it was like full home gyms. And I, she, I can get you hooked up. She wants to get one. I want to get one eventually. Yeah, but honestly, they're just expensive. Honestly, That's, Facebook Market, you can find all kinds of people throwing away their found, workout equipment. She found one. So what we want is we have some friends that have one, and you can drill. It's a rack, like a, a oh rack, yeah, you yeah. Know, but you drill it into a wall, and it folds in. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a Shark Tank thing. That's what we want because we don't want something. We've had gym equipment in our garage before, but when you're trying to park your car in yeah, there and you have yeah. to, like, pull it out, it just yeah. – we'd rather just unfold it or whatever. Well, we have the mats. We bought the two-by-two uh. two by two mats, um, the little checkerboards, that, and it fills up half our garage. So I can fit Lexi's car. It's tight, but um, I ain't fitting two cars in my garage anymore, you know, but – it's to me, it's worth it because I like working out on those those nice foam mats. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's when you're in the garage, man, oh, man it'll yeah. kill your knees it if will. you're on anything. So it will. Anyway, okay. yep. all right. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Pour it out. Big shout out to my dad. Whoa. My dad came in town. My mom and dad came in town for Easter, and uh, we had an area in our backyard where the dogs had used the bathroom, and it just killed the grass. Yeah. Like just killed it. Well, uh, my dad came into town. And my dad always, like, whenever he comes, he's always like, what do you need help with? Like, what can I do? And so he's awesome. always wanting to do some projects and help out. I've really enjoyed getting to do stuff with him. But um, he helped put us put sod down. Like, got, got helped really? us get some sod and put some sod down in our backyard. So our backyard now has, like, no big dead spot anymore. So, But now I just have to keep spraying down where they yeah. go to the bathroom, try and keep it away. Yeah. I know some people give them, like, uh, dog treats or whatever that mm. are supposed to help you know, regulate so that they don't kill the grass or whatever. But we're trying to figure out what to do there. But, yeah, big shout-out to my dad. I got to uh, – I mean, he did most of the work because I was occupied with all the Easter stuff. Yeah. But got to lay down some sod, and it looks good. I'm I'm glad to have it out there. It it bothers me. I'm, I'm an OCD kind of guy, so, like, seeing this big just patch of dirt where they use the bathroom right off the deck. I mean, it was like – Here's our patio. You take one step, and then there's like a a foot of just like dead grass Same all the way me. around. Same with me. My whole yard, dude. It it looks like a yeah, like which yours stay outside. Zone. Mine does, yeah. Or so that's that's one thing. Yeah, but ours are inside dogs. They just go outside to use the bathroom. So, but your dogs just, take off. They're like rockets. Oh, they are. So rockets. that's why that one little spot's dead. That's true. But that's, that's true. good to put some sod down. That's smart. Yeah. I probably have a few spots I could do that in. Yeah, we did it. We, my dad, we got some extra and kind of put it, laid it down in the back. Yeah. And he was like, "You can basically just pull this up and put it in the spot later if you need more." Yeah. So it was kind of a, it was a good idea. But yeah, dude, grass, man, golly, don't it. it you yeah, just, we can't it'll, go there. It, it, You'll, can't you'll go lose there. sleep over we it. We can't go you there. Know? Um, I need to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We but just, clutch dad, man. I oh, love, dude, I, clutch yeah. dad. That's a that should be a hashtag. Just, oh man, and then we. <laughs> We can get it. your dad. We I hung, mean, your dad. Hung, if I go to Ace Hardware and he was wearing one of the uniforms, I'm going to him. He's yeah. got the oh, look. Oh yes, he he's does. got the look. He does. He he he's got Lowe's written him all. Do all any of the two inch or do any of the four inch screws? Oh, my, my dad would know. Clutch dad. He um he also <laughs> it's funny. We on one of our walls we hung some. I, I bet you if I asked pictures. him what kind of coffee I should get. He'd say cafe meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad would say order me whatever you get. Oh. That's that's what he'd say. He'd say just don't don't order the uh, the cola mocha. Oh yeah, the mocha cola thing. Uh, oh, but but terrible. Um, he helped. But we put some pictures up, and it was just so funny. You know, <laughs> trying to get things straight and right. Oh man, it's just it's amazing. you know how it can be. It can be fun, but no, yeah. Big shout out there. Big oh, shout out there. So anyway. It's awesome. Anyway, all right, you got anything else, Preston? I'm we good. good. I'm we good. good. We got Thank the Cafe Mule. We're ready to go. Yeah, we're Dude, this is our favorite. This is the best. Favorite recommendation so far. Uh, so anyway, all right, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back next week starting something new, so make sure you tune in. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.